This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, welcome to yet another challenging case. He is an 80-year-old patient with bilateral brown hard cataract. The nucleus is about grade 5. The cornea has a prominent arcus and he's got another issue. He has got extremely deep set eyes. We try doing specular microscopy, which is a routine evaluation we do for every patient posted for cataract surgery. But the machine could not acquire images for some reason in this patient. Maybe because the patient was not fixating and it was quite disappointing not to get the information when we need it the most. Now this is the biometry report. The antechamber depth is alright, not shallow, which was one good thing in this patient. And also I looked very carefully in slit lamp examination to find any evidence of zonular weakness which wasn't there. After some thought, I decided to go ahead with fake emulsification of the surgical procedure uh, with a clear goal of performing the surgery with minimum damage to the endothelium. So to counter the deep set eyes, I decided to give a peribulb bar block which would also prop up the eye a little bit and also provide solid anesthesia as I'm expecting a long surgery in this patient. Dispersive OVD is being injected into the antechamber and a posterior limbal base 2.8 mm incision is created. The rexus is being done. Zonules are healthy. That's what I notice the first thing as I begin my rexus. A bigger rexus is critical in such large dense nucleus. Well, in this case, it is slightly smaller than what I would have actually liked. I'm performing gentle hydrodissection with very minimal fluid used. Uh, it's important to understand this concept because the lens is extremely bulky and occupies the entire lens of the capsule. So using large amount of fluid can bloat the posterior capsule. So use very small amount of fluid at multiple quadrants. Nucleus rotation confirms a free nucleus from the attachments. The nucleus management part in this video is mostly unedited or minimally edited. So it's going to be slightly long video, but one can observe the difficulties through the process. The phaco tip is slightly exposed long than I usually use. And also I'm using a long chopper to provide me with the extra reach. I begin by sculpting the central core of the nucleus to create a central pit, which is going to allow access to the deeper part of the nucleus. Now please note the settings as I'm using 90% continuous torsional power while I'm trenching. After creating a 50% depth pit, I shift to the chop mode for dividing the nucleus. And this is where the difficult part actually begins. The tip is buried, but I'm finding it difficult to get a deeper crack. Only the superficial part of the nucleus is cracking, while the deeper part isn't budging. I come out, re-inject viscoelastic and then I go ahead and grip the nucleus again and again try to repeat the chop and the lateral maneuver. This time I have got a deeper crack but still the posterior plate is so thick it is refusing to separate. So it's not wise to keep on pulling it laterally when it is not giving way so I go ahead and try to make smaller pieces with each of the hemi-nucleus. In each of these chopping maneuvers, I could get through 75% of the nucleus, but the posterior plate continues to remain attached and is extremely leathery and thick. At this moment, the pupil has come down, so I'm injecting some amount of intracameral midriatic, like adrenaline or phenocaine, just to maintain proper midriasis. At this moment, I realize that a bigger rexus is beneficial, so go ahead and enlarge the rexus. The chopping maneuver is being continued. The nucleus is so bulky and so dense, there is a lack of space there. And although the chopping maneuver is giving me superficial chunks of nucleus, uh, but the posterior plate is still remaining attached. 
at this moment in this piece i go in with my chopper behind the the fragment to cut some of the adhesions which are holding the posterior plate so this is one way of you know dealing with the posterior attachments So please note the amount of viscoelastic which I'm using and the number of time I'm using the viscoelastic. I'm just numbering it. So after every fragment, I'm coming out and using viscoelastic and which is typically dispersive OVD goes in first followed by HPMC. This is a sort of a modified soft shell technique. The process of dividing the nucleus and trying to separate the posi plate continues. And as soon as I have some small fragment, I am pulling it out of the bag and emulsifying it at the level of the rexus. When I am emulsifying it, please note the position of the B well. It is slanted slightly downwards and towards my left. Since the bevel is facing away from the endothelium, this prevents the ultrasound energy being traversing toward the corneal endothelium. So these three pieces are being held by a common uh, nodal point. I lift up these three pieces, the posterior attachments, and then FACO that base area. So it's very easy to separate the three fragments, but each of these three fragments are still quite large. This fragment has come out into the antechamber and it is being manipulated back into the bag. And again, please note the position of the bevel as this fragment is being emulsified. As I typically keep on telling, the chatter has to be controlled by the foot pedal by using the right amount of energy. OVD is again replenishing to the eye. The last fragment is quite huge. So I'm trying to divide it into two fragments and then each of these fragment is then very slowly and very carefully emulsified. Well, this case almost took 20 minutes for me to complete it. And the greatest virtue one has to have in such cases is just patience. You need to hang in there, be very slow and very gentle. That's all is required here. The patience is required because of every fragment I come out and inject OVD. So that's the key here. And the only key is patience and to be very committed to replenish the OVD at every opportunity available. So in this case, I ended up using two full vials of a dispersive OVD and one vial of HPMC in this case. Once the nucleus is done, the rest of the procedure is extremely easy. The cortex is aspirated out. And the lens is implanted into the bag.
So let's look at the first day picture and this is how the eye looks in the first day. Patient has an excellent visual outcome. The cornea is very clear compared to the density of the nucleus and the time we took it to emulsify it. To summarize, such cases very well go ahead and do a small incision cataract surgery or extra capsule surgery if one wishes to. But if you have the right game plan and the right technique and most importantly patience, you can also conquer this dense cataract by phacomulsification as well without compromising the endothelial health. Of course, deep chamber in this eye was beneficial for me and that gave me an opportunity to work away from the endothelium. But if I had a second chance, what would I have done differently? In this case, my initial trench was 50% depth before I begin chopping. So if I had a second chance, I would definitely have gone, created a much more deeper trench that is about say 90% depth. That would have significantly eased my difficulties in cracking the posterior plate. So that was one thing which I would have done differently. I did not go 90% depth in this case uh, because I did not expect that the posterior plate would be so tough. But uh, you never know how the cases can be. So it would have been wiser for me to create a slightly deeper trench. Then nevertheless, even with a shallow trench, I could complete the fake emulsification. Although there was a lot of difficulty in the fracturing the posterior plate, since I was very patient and was very slow, it could still be managed quite well. That was it. Thank you for your attention and hope you found this helpful.